What's up everybody? Welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. My name is Steve Fast. You guys are new to the channel and this is the Hammerdown Motorsports shop. Today we are working on our 1995 Ram project. We have the third gen Ram seats for this truck and I'm going to show you guys how far we've gotten on the install so far. So over here on the stand, we do have our 2004 Ram driver's seat. You can see all these brackets and all that kind of stuff. This is totally different than what's gonna fit in the 95 Ram. So what you're gonna have to do is take a grinder or Dremel, anything you have, remove these rivets over here, 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 and here and here as well. And you're gonna get rid of all this bracketry. That's all gonna go away. And then you're gonna to wanna to go over to your 1995 seats. I've already done this and I ground off all the same rivets on the bottom of these seats, removed all those brackets. I did leave this one here just because it doesn't have anything to do with the center console. So I didn't really need to remove that one. And then we have a baseline for our fabrication for our new mounts. Now over here on the passenger side, these were the first mounts that I made. These are the factory 1995 mounts. What I did is I cut two inches off because these seats actually sit too high in the truck. And now as you can see, it's not exactly sitting where it's gonna be, but you do have nice headroom and everything like that. And when this is mocked up onto these mounts, you do have a nice seating position, but you wanna make sure that's right before you finish everything up and before you have your final product. But on these, I kind of made a little bit of a mistake and ended up using the one inch flat bar, which is what I had laying around the shop. And I should have used something a little bit wider because these seats, the tracks are actually a little bit more narrow than the 95. So when you go to bolt these to the tracks, I don't have enough real estate here. So when I made the other side, I actually used one and seven eighths, and you can see they're a whole lot wider over there. So on this side, I'm gonna have to modify a little bit. I'm probably gonna weld a piece on the bottom and then have another piece that will extend just so this retains its same height. And then we'll be able to have a place to bolt the seats to. But that is something I had to learn, so I definitely wanted to let you guys know about that. But over here on the driver's side, you can get a little bit of a better look of what you need to fabricate if you are gonna use the 1995 mounts and kind of make them fit for the 2004 seats. And as for the center seat from the 2004, there is a stud that actually goes right into our factory 1995 bracket for the center seat for the 95. So that did actually work out. And our bracket from our 1995 on this side is a little bit kind of turned to the back. So I'm gonna to have to notch it out a little bit just to get this straight. And I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna use this just yet. I kind of gotta see how the seat's gonna sit on there once we have everything mocked up here but I'm probably gonna end up having to cut this off and we might have to fabricate something for that. And we're probably gonna have to fabricate a custom mount here, but all in all, this does give you a fighting chance at getting these seats in the truck and it should work out pretty well. So I'm sure there's a million ways you can grind off these factory rivets to get these brackets removed. The way that I use, if I could get a grinder in, I would grind these off. I think on this one here, I can get the grinder in nicely. Everything's nice and open and we can get those removed pretty quickly. Unfortunately, over here, we do have a ridge on either side, which kind of limits what you can get inside there. If you have a Dremel tool, you could probably use that. I ended up using a carbide bit on a die grinder because I do have an air compressor and air system, all that kind of good stuff. So we can actually go in here and just kind of eliminate the head of the rivet and then be able to get a pry bar underneath and just kind of pop these off and we're good to go. So let's get these brackets cut off our 2004 driver's seat and we'll be one step closer to getting these third gen seats installed in our project truck. All right, so we got our brackets removed. This one here, I wanted to be a little bit stubborn, so we're gonna have to knock that one out. There is clearance on the other side, so there's no reason why it shouldn't come out. But these other ones came out pretty easily just with a punch and a chisel, maybe a little help from the air hammer. This one here is actually gonna be in the way of the mechanism, just kind of where it's sitting right now. Being that it is power, we can't just move it manually, so we're gonna have to hook up power to this thing, hence why I've got my cutters here. This wire here, as far as I can see, is gonna be our 12 volt for the center console. It's got a little 12 volt jack inside it. And then over here is our main plug, which would have gone into the 2004. And you can see there's two large wires on there. There's an orange and a black. 
I believe those are our power in. And then we can see there's a couple other smaller wires. One is gonna be for our seatbelt monitor, which we're not gonna need anymore. Being that the 95 doesn't have a seatbelt monitor to know whether it's clicked in or not. So we're not gonna worry about that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off this connector. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room just in case it ever needed to be reconnected, which probably will never ever happen, but it's just a good practice. Never leave your wires too short that you can't go back from what you did. And then we're gonna go over to our 95 seats and we're gonna cut off the power connector on that one. That one's a lot more simple. All there is is one connector, two wires, and basically we'll run everything. So we're gonna cut off this one and then we're gonna wire it up to our 2004 seats and we should have a factory connection at our driver's side power seat. All right, so we got our factory connector cut off. I stripped back the wires here a little bit. We do have three wires that we're gonna use. These two wires, obviously, from the color coding that you can see over here on this connection that goes to the seat belt. We're not gonna be using those. We can cut those off, tape them off, whatever the case may be. They will not be used anymore. We do have our orange wire, which is gonna be our main power wire. We have our black wire, which is gonna be our main ground. And we have this wire over here that if you check with your meter, which I already did, goes over to this one right here, you can see the color matches as well. This is our power for our 12 volt port that goes in the center console and the ground is common. So we will have our ground connection there. Our two powers here, that's gonna go to our plug on the factory plug from our 1995 and we're good to go. And there it is, we got our wires all soldered, heat shrunk and put in the loom. Now we have our 1995 plug on our 2004 seat and once we plug this in, everything should work. So now we can take our 2004 seat and put it in the cab. We can see how our modified brackets are gonna fit on the rails, kind of see where we're gonna put our bolts in the front and see how the rear is gonna fit, how if we have to modify any brackets from our old setup or we're gonna make some new ones, just kind of see how what kind of height we're gonna need there and plug in our electric and make sure the power seat works. And here it is, we have our 2004 Ram driver's seat in place. Everything is sort of mocked up right now. We have our power connected. Let's see if this thing works. So we got our rear tilt. Oh yes, rear tilt is fully functional. We have our height, forward, back, front tilt. We're good to go. And that is awesome because the seats that we did have in the truck were very old. These have 160,000 miles on them and they're 25 years old. And these motors are pretty worn out. Basically what you'd have to do to move the seat front and back is get out of the truck, hit the switch and help the seat along. So to have working power seat on the driver's side is absolutely amazing. It's gonna make this truck so much nicer to drive. So unfortunately the 2004 seat buckles do not fit the seat belts that are in the 1995 truck. So we ended up putting on the red ones that came with our old seats and we retained our red seat belts and I think it looks absolutely awesome. All right, we got our seat back out of the truck. What I did was I put it all the way in the back position and then I set up the seat where I wanted it and basically just kind of set it exactly the farthest back position that I would ever want this seat to be. And this is where we ended up. We're actually sitting a little bit further back on these mounts than I thought it would be, but that's kind of where it lines up with the center seat. So it kind of makes sense, but either way, we got our holes drilled here now. Now what I'm gonna do is find some hardware. So we're gonna drill the hole obviously to the size for the hardware and we're gonna fit it through where the rivet hole was. That's kind of where this hole came from. All I did was I set the seat in place. I had it all the way back and then I just marked where the rivet hole was and that's where we're gonna put our bolt through for our front bracket and then we can figure out how the rear is all gonna to come together. So I think what I'll end up doing is just cutting this stud off, being that it's not gonna be able to go into this rail. And I think our best bet would be just to drill a hole in the floor for this hole here and then put a spacer underneath it just to make sure everything is level and we should be good to go. All right, we got the stud cut off. Use my handy Milwaukee little Sawzall tool. Works pretty awesome for that. And it's a good idea not to make any sparks in this area because you don't want to burn your new seats. So the hacksaw worked pretty good for that. Now we're gonna take our inner rear bracket and we're just gonna cut off this piece that used to go to the 1995 seat. And then we're just gonna be left with this piece here as our spacer and our support for our center seat. All right, so we're doing a little trial and error here on the back side of the driver's seat. On this bracket here, what we did is actually bolted it down. It's got the nut on the original stud and this is nice and tight. 
But what we had here is a little bit too small of a hole. I have to actually cut this out a little bit more so this tracks can actually sit down on top of that nut. But we're unable to use the nut to fasten the track because then the stud will actually come up too high. And then when the seat comes back, it's gonna hit the stud. So you have limited clearance over here. So what we're gonna do is actually use this back hole here and I took a little piece of the old seat bracket and I just roughly cut it off here just to see if it would fit. And we're actually gonna do the same thing over here on the outside bracket. And we're just gonna stick this underneath and it's actually gonna space out our track. So when we put our hole here through the floor and we tighten down our bolt, we'll have this underneath to keep everything nice and level. And since we have four of them, we'll be able to cut the other one off of the other bracket and we'll have one for this side and then we should have nice even spacing. All right, we got our hole drilled to the right size, and now that it's sitting down all the way, that stud is sticking up a little bit too high. If I go all the way back, it will hit it. So we're gonna have to trim a little bit off the top of that stud, but that's not a big deal. We do have a lot of real estate on that one. We can trim that one down a little bit, and then we can get ready to put in our rear bolts. Well, everybody, I think the time has come, and I think you might be thanking me for this one. I think it's time to remove the dirty, nasty, horrible carpet that's in this truck full of garbage, full of all kinds of nastiness that's been under the seat of this truck for years and years and years. The reason I left it in here as long as I did, there is a few things that need to be disconnected before it can come out, really not that big of a deal, but I figured if I was gonna be drilling and grinding and all that kind of stuff to make these brackets, all the shavings and everything can just stay in this nasty carpet and when I pull it out, boom, I have a clean slate. But as things happened and I started getting into drilling the rear holes, we have to drill through the carpet and it's just gonna be a pain because it's not gonna be an accurate hole. It's gonna to wanna to move the tracks around and all that kind of thing. And I want everything to be nice, neat and straight. So we're gonna be removing this tomorrow, getting everything nicely cleaned up inside this cab, get those holes drilled. I'm gonna run out tonight and grab some proper bolts for these so we can actually fasten them down. Once and for all, I'm gonna get some nylock nuts so nothing's gonna back off and stainless hardware, obviously, so we're not gonna have any rust. And then we can have everything bolted in nicely. One mistake that I did make that I wanted to let you guys know about is when I cut these brackets, I used the same angle as the 1995 brackets had, kind of had like a little bit of a backwards lean to it. And I thought, okay, well that's gonna work. It should line up when our tracks go to the back. And as it turned out on these seats, there is a little bit of a gap. So now when I bolt the front of the bracket in, it's touching in the front, but then it's got probably maybe about an inch of a gap as it kind of goes down to the words the back. So if you were to draw a line from where the rear rail is gonna fasten, to the bracket before you cut it, you're gonna get a very nice line. You're gonna be able to put your flat bar where you want it. Mine, I'm probably gonna end up having to make a little bit of a spacer just so that rail is fully supported on that front bracket, which is kind of an afterthought. It's not exactly the way I wanted to do it, but now that I've cut them and I've welded everything, I'm kind of stuck at this point. Now just kind of chasing my tail to make this all work, but that's kind of the first time you ever do something like this, that's, that's basically what you run into. There really isn't a whole lot on the internet on this swap. There's one guy that has some pictures that are really kind of hard to follow and the description I didn't find very good either. So this is kind of new territory for me. I was just gonna kind of take it my own way and just see how everything worked out. And these are some of the issues that I ran into. So if you watch this video, you're doing this, you can do it perfect the first time. And that's what these videos are all about. So we're blazing some new trails here and we're gonna have some awesome seats in the end. And this is just kind of the stuff that I went through. So I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this video. We are gonna be continuing getting this entire setup put in, showing you guys how it all fits and everything like that. And we probably will run into some more things. So that's what this is all about. About. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, keep that hammer down.